Hi everyone, welcome back to 2019. Now, as you can see from the title of this video, it's called 106 and 107. Strictly speaking, 106 is about fabrics and fibers, but due to the academic nature of this topic, I decided that it's best to just leave it in written form. So you can go to the website, as you can see me scrolling through. It's a very detailed article where you can read about types of fibers and fabrics, and you can educate yourself according to your needs. Basically, you have natural fibers, you have man-made fibers, and when you get there, you'll be able to see the basic ones. And then I go into the different type of fabrics you can find in the typical Nigerian markets using the English names and some of the colloquial names that you can use to find them, but it's different in different locales. So please visit the website. And today's video is on metric system, imperial system, the parts of your fabric and washing, pre-washing and ironing. Just a few basics that you should know before you actually start sewing. Now we're back. The very first thing you need to know is your measuring tape. Some measuring tape have centimeters on both sides, some have inches on both sides. I have a tape that has inches on one side and centimeters on the other. On this side, this is the imperial system where you have inches and this is the metric system where you have centimeters. It really doesn't matter which one you use, it depends on your locale. But for the sake of conversion, you just need to know that one inch equals 2.5 cm. In case you're using different materials, that's just what you need to know. Next, we go into yards and meters. If you're using imperial system, one yard equals 36 inches. This is a yard. But if you're using metric system, they sell by the meter and a meter is 100 cm. So when you're buying fabric in the market, you either buy by the yard or you buy by the meter. Please note that a meter is a little longer than a yard. You can also buy by half yard or by half a meter. Next, we're going to go into the basic parts of your basic woven fabric. I'm going to use this tissue to illustrate. Let's just assume this is a bale of fabric. The bales come like this and they roll out like that. This side would be the length. And then the shorter side would be the width. The width is usually a definite length. It could be 45 to 60 inches or 115 cm to 150 cm. The length is however long the bale is. It's from that part the measure of the yardage. One yard, two yards, three yards, and so on. Or one meter, two meters, or three meters, and so on. Now, the length is also where you have what is called the selvage, which is the finished edge of your fabric. And it doesn't fray and is very firm. And the width is the side that is cut in the market. So you can see they cut it like this, one yard, one yard, maybe two yards. That's usually how it's cut in the market when you're buying fabric. So that is the length which is also known as the lengthwise grain. That's the width, which is known as the crosswise grain. In between all this, on the diagonal, you have what is called the bias. At a pure 45 degree angle, it's called a true bias. So this is the true bias, but anything else that is on a curve and is not strictly on the lengthwise grain or crosswise grain is still a bias. So this is a cut of Ankara fabric. Here you can see the part I call the selvage, which is also the length. You can see it's a finished edge. It doesn't fray. It's very firm. Here is the cut edge, the width, and that's the edge that is cut in the market when you're buying fabric. So if I bring back my tape here, if you're in the market, this is how they sell yards. 
you buy a yard, a second yard, three yards, and so on and so forth. If I turn it to this side, this cut edge, let me just fold that a bit. That's your width. So from that selvage to that selvage, it could be anything from 45 inches to 60 inches or 115 cm to 150 cm. So it's a definite length. But on this side, the length of the fabric is as long as the bill, however long the bill goes. Now, one of the characteristics of most woven fabrics is that they don't stretch. So if I pull it like this or like this, you see it doesn't stretch. But when you pull it on the bias, which is at a 45 degree angle, it becomes stretchy depending on the type of fabric. So you use a bias cut if you want your fabric to have a kind of soft drape. And usually anything cut on a curve, like an armhole or a neck hole, is on the bias. As long as it's not strictly on the lengthwise grain or the crosswise grain, it's on the bias. So once again, that's your selvage and that's your width. That's your lengthwise grain, which goes like that parallel to the selvage. This is your crosswise grain, which is parallel to the width. And this is your bias. Here we have my tissue again and um, a jersey fabric or knit fabric, similar to what you have for a t-shirt. So put that away. Let's start with this. I'm just going to roll this and let's just imagine that it's a tube, that it's one continuous rolled shape, that it's like a cylinder. Most knitted fabrics are knitted in the round, or should I say woven in the round. It's really just one continuous yarn knitted round and round and round. So that is the width and that would be the length. So if we're to buy a yard, it will be measured off this lengthwise side. So if I buy one yard, they cut it like that. Two yards, they cut it like that. So there's no issue of weft threads and warp threads. It's really just one continuous yarn. There are other ways of knitting, but that's the most basic form. Now, if I bring back my fabric here, let me open it up. I'm gonna fold it a little in the middle so you can see both ends. Now you can see this edge is folded, this edge is folded, there's no raw edge because it's one continuous tube. I'll turn it around. This folded edge is the length and this cut edge is the width. And that's the part that was cut in the market. As I said, there's no issue of weft and weft threads. But we'll just call that area the length and that is the width. The width is usually about 60 inches for most knits. It could be shorter, but most times it's about 60 inches. Now, if you buy a knitted fabric in the round like this, when you go home, you can just cut it open and spread it out to a flat shape. Now, one of the characteristics of knitted fabric is that they tend to be stretchy. It could be two-way stretch or four-way stretch. Two-way stretch means it's very, it stretches on one side, on two sides, but doesn't stretch on one side. Let me bring this fabric. Four-way stretch is when it stretches on all sides. Well, this, I think, strictly is still a two-way stretch fabric, but something like your swimsuit, lycra, very stretchy on all sides, that's four-way stretch. Then something like this that's only stretchy on one side is more of a two-way stretch knit. Another thing to note about knit fabrics is that they don't fray. Even though this is the cut edge and it's rough, you can see the threads don't pull out and they don't fray. The advantage of this is that when you sew something with knitted fabric, you usually don't have to do anything else to the seams because they don't fray. They, you can just leave them as they are. You can even leave them exposed in some cases as decoration. Let's go into right side and wrong side of fabric. The most obvious way to tell is the color. Now the right side is the side that faces outside and the wrong side is the side that you keep inside of your clothing. So the right side here is bright, is vibrant, and the wrong side 
is duller and more faded. That's the most obvious way. Another way to tell is to look at the length on, on the selvage where they have the label of the fabric. On the right side, it writes way up, and on the wrong side, it will be written backwards. So that's another indicator if it's not so obvious by the color of the fabric. And it also helps to identify the selvage if you look at for the label, because not all selvages look like that. For example, some selvages look like this, where you can see the threads, but it's not the edge that frays. This is the width where the thread comes, and this is the selvage. And not every fabric actually has labels. Commonly found here in Nigeria, you're going to find a lot of mystery fabric, and they will tell you it's sample material, sample material. It's not really the proper name, but they are not usually identified in any way. And usually most English fabrics here are called sample material. Now, we have something like this. Another indicator is fabric that has these holes along the selvage. Where they are raised and kind of bumpy, you can feel them with your fingers. That is the right side. Let me flip this. Where they are flat and kind of depressed, that is the wrong side. Now, this kind of fabric, you can actually use either side as your right side, but strictly speaking, this is actually the right side and this is the wrong side. Here is another fabric that you really cannot tell the right or wrong side. It's very hard to tell, but it also has those depressions on the selvage, and that's another way. As I said, on the right side, it's raised. On the wrong side, it's depressed. So this is a simple way to tell the difference. With knit fabrics, like this type of knit where both sides look almost the same, really the weave is the same, but the right side tends to be more raised, more rich, more fuzzy, but the wrong side tends to be rather flattened and smoother. So when you look at it, I, most times you can just tell just by looking at it, but the right side is always a little more textured, more raised and more fuzzy, while the wrong side is really flat. Last but not least, we have knit fabric sizes that are knitted in the flat, meaning they are not knitted in the round, but they are knitted flat like your woven fabric. They do not have weft or warp threads either, but they are just, but they are flat like this. So they still have a length, they still have a selvage and a width, but it's not a combination of weft and warp threads. It's still one continuous thread. Now, I should point out that not every knitted fabric is stretchy and not every woven fabric is non-stretchy. Woven fabric can be stretchy like in jeans where it's mixed with spandex and knitted fabric can be non-stretchy but very, very little stretch, like some very st um, stiff t-shirts or other things that are just not too stretchy but they are made of knit fabric. Finally, I, I want to quickly talk about pre-washing. If it's your fabric and you have the luxury of washing it, go ahead. Just put it gently in the wash, either in the washing machine or hand wash. Roll it up like this and let it soak for a few minutes with soap and warm water. Then rinse it out and just gently rinse, um, squeeze it out and dry it. You don't have to be too vigorous. What it does is that it removes excess dye. It allows the fabric to shrink if it's going to shrink and of course it's going to be clean. Then you can iron it with some steam because fabric is much easier to work with when it's very smooth and it's firm. Now, if it's not really your fabric, you might want to just steam it with an iron that might help it to shrink and even starch it. So it's a good way to prepare your fabric for use. Get it clean, get it ironed, get it pressed so that it's flat and easy to work with. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye.